forgiveness of sins so we can receive from God and so we can obtain God's mercies. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 says, He who covers his sins does not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes shall obtain mercy. That word says, if I confess and forsake, I will obtain mercy. So what happens if I do not confess and forsake? What happens if I do not repent of my sins? I will not receive the mercy of God, even though the mercy of God has been showered down on humanity from heaven. We made that point really clear in one of the charts that we drew in the Overcomer Secret in Section 3 of how some cartoon characters can stay under the covers of umbrellas of lack of repentance and lack of honesty to block the reign of God's mercy over their heads. So even though the mercy of God has been shed through the blood of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, because I refuse to repent, what I am technically doing is blocking the reign of God's mercy over my head. And I will not be able to obtain mercy and receive from the Lord. I mean, how important is the mercy of God? The mercy of God is the favor of God that releases life to humanity to neutralize the effect of our frailties, to temper the demands of negative judgment activated because of our sins, and to help believers to sustain the practice of our agape. The mercy of, God will, will, mercy of God will catch us and let us not be destroyed by the consequence of our sins. And, and neutralize and temper the demands of negative judgment activated because of our sins. Because when we rebel against God, we get a salary or a wage of death, just like we read in Romans chapter 6. Circumstances start getting configured against peace and tranquility. That's a manifestation of judgment, because God has designed his creation to react against rebellion against him. But we need the mercy of God to reconfigure circumstances, to change all the circumstances, to overcome the manifestation of judgment on the outside. That's what the mercy of God specializes in doing. But the way I get that mercy is by repenting of my sins. The way I get that mercy is to acknowledge the sinful sinful condition and be honest about it and ask God for mercy. But if I do not repent, I won't get that mercy. So judgment is going to be my circumstances. Things are going to start breaking. Uh, the, my car is going to start breaking down. Uh, the tornado is going to blow up my roof. And all this kind of negative circumstances will start chasing me down the road because misfortune pursues sinners and prosperity is the reward of the righteous. That's in Proverbs chapter 13. So it is important to repent. This generation needs to learn that. Change your will. Stop rebelling against the Lord. You do not have enough arms and legs to fight against your Creator. There is no divination against Israel. There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. You cannot prosper rebelling against God. And God is not even seeing you as the source of rebellion against Him. He's inviting you to repent of every dead work. So to obtain the mercy of God, we got to repent of our sins. Another reason we need to repent of our sins is so we can get a time of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. The Bible makes that point uh, categorical in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. It says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So you know, some people may want to wonder why is there just no refreshing in my life why do i go from one kind of chaos to another i solve this problem just to wait for another problem to happen down the road tomorrow and i solve that problem another one crops up to my circumstances and i keep on go going from problems to problems issues to issue challenges to challenges and i don't know it seems like i'm being buried by all these problems what's going on with me you're not repentant of certain scenes it says you need to repent so that times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. In other scripture in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15 says, In repentance shall be your salvation and quietness and rest. In other scripture says there is no peace for the wicked. You want true peace which passes understanding? You want the joy from the presence of the Lord? You've got to repent of rebellion against the author of that peace. Because in the presence of the Lord, there's the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are places forevermore. He holds the peace which passes understanding. Not your dollars in the bank. Not the treasure on the mountain. 
Now the riches that you kept somewhere, the peace which passes understanding, the person who holds it is your creator. So when you rebel against him, you rebel against the peace that comes from your creator as well. So there's not going to be any time of refreshing. There's not going to be any salvation if we choose not to repent of our sins. But if we repent of our sins, we're going to get forgiveness of our sins. We'll be able to receive all the blessings of God in our lives. We will obtain mercy. We will get times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. We will get salvation, rest, peace, and tranquility. Tranquility. So, and uh, there is a host number of reasons why you, you need to repent. We want to we wanna challenge people to do just that. We want to ask them to go to heroesmart.com and go to the milk section to access uh, further resources. And that can teach you the mechanics of repentance. Um, you can access resources on um, the pharmacy section of that website as well. You can order books and tapes. The Overcomer Secret that we just talked about, a book that my wife and I wrote, uh, talks extensively about the concept of repentance in the section 3 of that book. And how the mercy of God is going to be important for you to stay as an overcomer in Christ Jesus. So these reasons are so important so I can repent of my sins. So now, how do I repent of my sins? Again, the first sin I need to repent from is refusal to accept Jesus as the Lord of my life, refusal to get born again. And I need to repent of that baseline sin so I can overcome subsequent tendencies of rebellion against God. How do I repent of that baseline sin? Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord and you confess him as the Lord of your life and you believe that God raised him from the dead, you're going to be saved. Turn to Romans 10, 9 and 10. Get saved based on that. And subsequent sins, we want people to realize that uh, it, is, it is a simple process but it is highly technical. Why is it highly technical? Because there is a God part to it and a man part to it. The God part to it, we would like to understand firstly by looking at John chapter 6 and verse 44. Let's start from there. Jesus was letting people know that there is a God part to repentance. John chapter 6 and verse 44 says, Nobody can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So it seems like nobody can repent except God is giving them the opportunity to repent. So God is drawing you. If you're hearing this message, God is drawing you already. You want to seize that opportunity to identify the God part of that move and get into repentance quickly. Jesus says the same thing concerning the ministry of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 16. That when he comes, he will convict the world of sins. In John chapter 16, it says in verse 8, When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt regarding to sin. So the conviction of the Holy Ghost is, is needed before people can, can turn to the Father. And first John chapter 3, it talks about that same concept as well. That God has placed some kind of convictor in our hearts to let us know that what we're doing uh, is, is, is not right if, it's, if it is sin. Um, in John chapter 3, first John chapter 3, and from verse 19 to verse 20, and God lets us know um, this, this then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. It says that this is the way to rest. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Um, so he says in here, that uh, when our hearts condemn us, uh, let's start to read from verse 16. It says, this is how we know that that love, what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. And in verse 19, it says that we belong to the truth when we set our hearts at rest in his presence, when our hearts condemn us. So God... Is uh, letting us know that the Holy Spirit convicts people of their sins. And he says in verse 22, And we receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do those things that, ple that are pleasing in his sight. 
And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. And in verse 21, it says, Dear, dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. So that scripture lets us know that we cannot afford to have condemnation in our hearts if we want to receive anything from God. And that guilt, the word translated condemnation over here should better be translated as guilt actually. That guilt is the voice of the Holy Spirit knowing you in your heart to let you know that something is wrong in here. Change it. And based on the evidence of John 6, 44, and John chapter 16, that is his ministry. Nobody can come to the Father except nobody can come to Jesus except the Father draws him through the agency of the work, the Holy Spirit. So there is a God part of repentance. And Jesus says the same thing in Matthew chapter chapter 13 when he was talking about the parable of the sower. It says, this people I'm talking to on the outside in parables. I'm talking to them in parables because I do not want them to see. I do not want them to hear even though they hear. I don't want them to understand. Why? Because they do not want to understand. And I don't want them to see clearly with their ears and hear properly with their hearts. Because when they see clearly with their ear, eyes and, and hear properly with, our, with, with their ears, see clearly with our eyes and hear properly with their ears, they're going to turn in repentance to me and I'll have to heal them. So God says that the prerequisite to, to turning is being able to see clearly with your eyes and hear properly with their ears. But guess who gives that seeing eye? Guess who gives that hearing here? The God Almighty. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 20, that the seeing eyes and the hearing hears, God gives them both. So the God part about repentance, the first move is the conviction of the Holy Ghost, is the giving of the seeing eyes, the giving of the ear and hears, the giving of the understanding heart, so that I can be convicted of my sins, so I can repent of it. So if God is tugging on your heart right now, there is guilt in your heart, there is no peace in your heart, there is no tranquility, that's God telling you, you need to repent of something, you need to repent of something, you need to repent of this thing, you need to repent of this thing. Then the next thing I need to do is to admit that dead work that God is talking my heart all about. And that's what 1 John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, then he is going to be faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there is a God move to talk at my heart. There is a man moved to admit that dead work based on 1 John 1, 9 and Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, which says, He who covers his sin shall not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes shall obtain mercy. So when God is talking to my heart, that's not the time for me to cover it up and say, no, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. The Bible says, I will not prosper if I do that. If I want to get the mercy of the Lord, I need to acknowledge that that's a sin. I find a portion in the Word of God that is violated by, by that particular conduct of mine, by that particular thought process of mine. See, but I haven't done anything wrong. What about the thought level? Because you need to understand that the standard of the New Testament is at the thought level. Jesus said, if you look at a woman or another person lost, lostfully, you've committed adultery and sexual immorality in your heart. And actually, that's been the standard all the while because Jesus was letting them know that this is what the law of Moses actually talked about because Jesus was trying to keep the spirit behind the law. So he told them the standard is at a thought level. If you hate your brother in your heart, the Bible says you're a murderer. But I haven't killed anybody yet. But do you have ill will in your heart towards somebody? Do you wish God would break his leg and cut off his nose? Do you wish that tornado would strike down his house and kill him? Jesus says, if you do that, you're a murderer. And God may be convicting you to change that, that disposition of your heart, to change that will. And when God's talking on your heart to change it, you've got to admit that that's a sin and repent of it. That's the first man's move. And then, once you recognize you admit that that's a, that's a sin based on honesty, that's the reason honesty and humility is important, and you want to ask God for forgiveness. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins... You gotta confess it. I acknowledge it as a sin. And then Hebrews 9 says that if the blood of bulls and goats could purge the flesh of those who offered it, how much more shall the blood of Christ purge your conscience from dead works so we can serve God? So I admit that dead work, I ask for forgiveness, and I receive my forgiveness by faith based on Hebrews 9. 
I, I quote that scripture back to God in Hebrews 9, 13 and 14. That your word says, uh, if the blood of bulls and goats could purge my con could purge the conscience of those who offered it, how much more shall the blood of Christ purge my conscience from dead works so I can serve the living God? So I say, God, I believe this word. I recognize what, sh what you're convicting me of as a sin, and I confess it as a sin right now. I ask for forgiveness, and I plead the blood of Yahushua, Jesus Christ, my Messiah, my Savior, to purge my conscience from this dead work, to remove this guilt from my conscience so I can carry on to serve the living God. And then God moves steps to play again, says the cleansing of your conscience. God is going to be faithful to do that based on 1 John 1, 9. And then subsequently, God's going to release Zoe into your spirit based on Romans chapter 5, verse 21. After the guilt has been removed from my spirit. Romans chapter 5, verse 21 um, says right here, says, So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. So when my righteousness is restored again, 1 John 1, 9 talks about my righteousness becoming unrighteousness. But Romans 5, verse 21 says, When my righteousness is restored through the agency of the grace of God, the life of God is going to flow back into my spirit again. Why is the flow of the life of God back into my spirit important? 1 John chapter 2, verse 24 says, See to it that the life of God remains in you, because when the life of God remains in you, you will be able to do righteousness. And you will have the energy to obey the word of God and remain in the psalm. So the life of God is important. We talked about that extensively in the Overcomer Secret. Um, if you don't understand the concept and the detail of the life of God, that is not just uh, a, a condition of living forever. It is a spiritual substance that gives us the energy and the ability to behave like God, and which we lost access to in the Garden of Eden. We want to recommend that you lay your hand on that book. It's important. So that life of God is important to get back into your spirit. Yeah, but the way it's going to get back into your spirit after you've done something wrong is to repent of your sin by activating this process that we term a God move and a man move and a God move and a man's move and a God move and a man's move so that you can receive your forgiveness. What's that process? What's that sequence again? Conviction of the Holy Spirit. God's move. Admitting the dead work. Man's move. Asking for forgiveness. Man's move. Receiving forgiveness by faith. Man's move. Cleansing of the conscience. God's move. The release of Zoe into the human spirit. God's move. So we can see it's highly technical. So a combination of God's move and man's move and God's move and man's move will help me to overcome the guilt in my conscience because I've repented of the dead work right now. And when the guilt in my conscience is wiped out, the life of God starts flowing into my spirit again. Is that the end of the neutralization of the dead work? We're 50% down the road of it. Because what's not going to need to happen is that life of God is going to give me the energy to obey the word of God and trigger a favorable response of positive judgment from God's creation. And we're going to talk about the concept of judgment later in this series when we start talking about eternal judgment. So we ask you to stay with us. But today what we want to concentrate on is repentance from dead work. How important it is. There is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace and tranquility. If I choose to harbor uh, sin in my heart, if I choose to harbor the tendency of rebelling against God, the tendency of not wanting to talk to God, the tendency of wanting to say yes when God says no, the tendency of wanting to establish a kingdom that will ouster the kingdom of God, that will overthrow the kingdom of God. I will not prosper in my ways. I will not receive the mercy of God. There is no peace and tranquility in my heart because of that. So we want to encourage people to, to activate the principle of repentance. The first thing you need to repent from is the baseline sin of refusing to call Jesus, Yahushua, the Lord, the Master, the Boss, the Savior of the world as your Lord and Savior. When you repent of that sin, you receive the, the platform you need to repent of subsequent actions of rebellion against the Lord. Rebellion like the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the highs. I need to repent of those things so I can receive all the blessings that we talked about concerning repentance from dead works. So we understand what dead works are. We understand what repentance is. It's the turning of the wheel from a direction of hostility to a direction of friendliness, friendliness to the Lord. We understand why we need to repent. We understand how to repent. And we know the reason this message is important because it's a foundational doctrine of Christianity which will help us to fix the foundation of our temple, which is obedience and complete obedience to the Word of God. 
And we talked about how important it is uh, in our generation to drum this message into our ears, to let people recognize that there is no peace without repentance. There is no uh, receiving from the Word of God without repentance of the tendency of rebelling against your Creator. You and I do not have enough arms and legs to fight the Creator of the ends of the universe, because there is no wisdom, there is no plan, there is no insight. That will work against the Lord Almighty. If everybody in creation together with the angels and the devil. The whole of the stars. The whole of the galaxies. Were to team up to fight against God the Son. God the Father. God the Holy Spirit. They still will not prosper. Because there is no wisdom against the Lord. He holds the key to life. He holds the source of life. He upholds all things by the word of his power. There is no point getting, getting upset or getting in rebellion against the person who holds the key to your breath. You can't win fighting your creator. It is a lot of wisdom to humble yourself and repent of every action of dead work. So what we've talked about today about the grace of God is the concept of repentance from dead works. Amen. Okay, let's take another break. Go through your notes for a moment and answer the following questions. Question 1. How do I receive mercy? A. Acknowledge the sinful condition. B. Repent of all sins. C. Confess all sins. Or D. All of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. Question two, why do we need the mercy of God? A, to catch us if we fall. B, to neutralize the effects of frailties. C, to temper the demands of negative judgment activated because of sin. D, to avoid undergoing that specific test again, or E, answers A, B, and C. The correct answer is E, answers A, B, and C. Question 3. If I confess and forsake my sins, I will receive the mercy of God. Is this A. True or B. False? The answer is A. True. Question 4. Which of these is not part of the sequence of repentance? A. Conviction of the Holy Spirit, God's move. B. Confessing and repenting of his sin, man's move. C. Asking for forgiveness and cleansing of your conscience, man's move. D. Receiving forgiveness by faith in the blood of Jesus, man's move. E. Forgiveness and cleansing by the blood of Jesus, God's move. F. Release of Zoe to the human spirit, God's move. Or G. Hiding the sin, man's move. The answer is G, hiding the sin, man's move. We appreciate the time that you have taken to listen to this message. We truly hope that it has been a blessing to you. If it has, please remember to tell someone else about it. And as always, God cares and so do we. Jesus is Lord God.